Hello, my name is Matthew Sarg. I'm a law professor at DePaul University College of Law in Chicago. I've recorded this series of videos about the Google Book Search settlement in order to contribute to public understanding and debate around this important issue. This presentation has been divided into multiple parts to make it easier to download. A copy of the entire slideshow is available at my website, and a short article accompanying this video will be available soon on the website ssrn.com. This article will include many of the footnotes and qualifications that are inevitably missing from this video presentation. On October 28, 2008, Google announced that it had reached a settlement of the highly publicized copyright class action lawsuit prompted by its foray into book search. If the settlement is approved by the courts, it will end four years of uncertainty and clear the way for Google to continue to digitize millions of copyrighted library books and to further develop its book search library project. But the question that many people are asking is whether this settlement should be approved by the court. The Google Book Search Settlement is a complicated document with far-reaching implications, and there are many different ways to evaluate it. One question that has not really been addressed so far is, how different is the settlement from what would have happened if this copyright case had in fact been decided by a court? This counterfactual breaks down into three questions. First, to what extent would Google's assertion of fair use have triumphed over the copyright owner's claims of infringement? Second, what exactly is the effect of the settlement agreement? And third, how does the settlement agreement compare to what the likely outcome of the court case would have been? Addressing these three issues doesn't by itself answer the question of whether the settlement should be approved, but it's an important step towards that ultimate question. Before we get to the question of fair use, I need to briefly review how the Google Book Search Engine actually works. Google's aim is to build a comprehensive search engine that allows full text searching inside millions of books from libraries all over the world. The problem here is that most books published over the last few hundred years aren't available in electronic form. Consequently, Google has been working with various libraries to digitize their paper collections over the past few years. Once a book has been digitized, Google can treat it the same way it treats an HTML web page. It stores a digital copy of the book on its servers and performs all kinds of data analysis in order to generate what is essentially a vastly improved library card catalog for the digital age. Once a book has been digitized and processed, it is available for reporting in response to user search queries. So with that in mind, we return to the question, is this copyright infringement or is it protected by the Fair Use Doctrine? Now the first thing to understand here is that the standard way Google reports search results does not by itself amount to copyright infringement. The basic bibliographic information that Google provides such as title, author, subject matter, etc., are all clearly uncopyrightable facts. Secondly, even the brief snippets of text that Google quotes from books are in all likelihood simply too small, too brief, and too insubstantial to amount to copyright infringement. If you're familiar with the Google Book Search Engine, you will have already seen extended limited previews displaying parts of various books. Google only provides these extended previews with the permission of the copyright owner. And of course, Google doesn't need anyone's permission to display works published before 1923 and other works in the public domain. This brings us back to the issue of digitization. Under the Copyright Act, Copyright owners clearly have the exclusive right to reproduce their work in copies. There is no doubt that digitally scanning a book and storing the scan on a computer hard drive where it can be retrieved and reprinted amounts to making a copy under the Copyright Act. Google's main argument against this charge of copyright infringement 
is that like the video cassette recorder and the MP3 player, this new technology is protected by the Fair Use Doctrine. Traditional application of the Fair Use Doctrine is almost always framed in terms of the four statutory factors listed here, and I'll review these factors in detail in the slides that follow. This presentation is continued in the next video.